Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 24th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today about an uptick in scans for a struts to death mode problem. I call it a problem, not a vulnerability, kind of on purpose, because it's really a feature that you should not see enabled on a public exposed production website. Death mode, as the name implies, is meant for development. It's basically a debug mode, gives you additional logs and uh, also error messages being displayed to the screen which is probably not that great either. But most importantly, as far as we're concerned here, it also gives you a simple web shell that you can use to execute OGNL expressions. We have seen lately a couple days with a pretty aggressive scans for uh, this particular issue, trying to figure out if code execution is possible. So, Double check your websites. Again, this is Struts 2 where this may be enabled and it's a configuration setting. Usually not a problem on a development website that's not accessible to the public internet, but definitely should not be enabled on a production website. And researchers from Microsoft uh, did uh, publish uh, details regarding an attack that they are attributing to Fancy Bear or Force Blizzard, as Microsoft calls them these days, essentially uh, the Russian GRU. And uh, this attack uses a tool that they refer to as Goose Egg that takes advantage of a number of older printer spooler vulnerabilities that Microsoft fixed in 2021 and 2022. You may remember the term print nightmare. That's sort of what these vulnerabilities were referred under. And well, apparently some people still haven't patched. In this case, probably nation state actors aren't the only one taking advantage of your systems if you are still quite a bit behind on patching like this. But then again, we also still see Equation Editor being exploited. And Microsoft also released the April 2024 Exchange Server Hotfix Update, or often also referred to as HU. This update itself is not a security update. However, it does fix a couple of functional issues that you may have experienced after applying the March 2024 security update, or SU. So if you held back on applying the March security update, then uh, please update now. Use this April hotfix update in order to fix any functional issues that have come up. There are also couples of security related uh, updates here. One is support for elliptic curve certificates and then for hybrid modern authentication in Outlook Web Access. And earlier this month, I did mention a remote code execution vulnerability in Progress Software's Flowmon. Flowmon being a tool to monitor network traffic either for performance or security. There is now a rather straightforward exploit available for this vulnerability. So definitely this is now a must patch. No authentication required. Rhino Security Labs did publish a blog with details about this vulnerability. It's pretty much your roughly textbook uh, command injection vulnerability. The root cause here is how Flowmon creates PDFs. It has a feature where you can turn certain graphs and such that you created into PDFs. Well, uh, that calls an operating system command, a script to create PDFs. The arguments are not properly escaped, even though the way they call it, it would be relatively straightforward to do it as Rhino security points out, but this was sort of just a simple omission here. With this vulnerability, it's then also possible to write a file into the document root, which can easily be used to then create a web shell. So easy exploit, definitely a must patch vulnerability at this point. I would say even if you don't directly expose this product to the internet, this would be sort of a great internal kind of a way to leverage this vulnerability given also the network access that this particular tool provides. 
And one of the often discussed no-nos in security is to download updates over HTTP versus HTTPS, but still occasionally tools are using HTTP. It's often hard to point to an actual incident where this caused a problem. Well, we have it nicely documented now. Avast has published a blog post where attackers have exploited just this vulnerability in the eScan antivirus update mechanism. Even more interesting, of course, that it's a security product, again, getting us into trouble here. This particular vulnerability was fixed July last year, or at least reported and fixed shortly afterwards in July. Well, it has been exploited in order to infiltrate networks with backdoors and also the occasional crypto coin miner. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. Thanks for any feedback that I got. Uh, actually, only one person noted that I got the date wrong apparently yesterday. I haven't uh, listened to it myself. Let me know if anything is wrong with these podcasts, if I can improve anything. Um, always willing uh, to listen. And as usual, uh, please you know, let your friends know, enemies, let everybody know that there is this great podcast. They should all listen to it. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.